Hi guys, Pete Turner here and welcome to the fourth episode in this vlog series. So today I'm answering a question posed to me by Adam Lee Casper England. And the question that he posed to me is what gear do I use when I'm filming and what cinematography techniques did I use in my B-roll? So I'm gonna be really honest, I don't consider myself an expert at cinematography. I've just been around cameras for a long time and I, I'm learning what looks good. Uh, I shoot pretty much every day just as a hobby. And um, the techniques that I use, I'll break down piece by piece. I wanted to show you the techniques whilst I was at home doing something mundane and how I can ultimately make what it is that I'm doing that's mundane look interesting. And look at the first two vlogs and have a look at the B-roll in those. You can see the mountains in Italy. You can see the flags flapping, the cars going over bridges, the window going up on the car. You can see me pushing pushing the tree back and the little butterfly flying through. All of those things are interesting to watch. Cinematography is about capturing those things and they're not the only things that I caught. I caught hundreds of things in Italy. I caught loads of things. I had so much that I literally got into the edit studio and I was like, whoa, what am I gonna use? One of the hardest things to do is capture good cinematography all the time. It's impossible. You're gonna shoot hundreds of different shots. You're gonna take shots over and over and over again until you get nice ones. Sometimes something was shot five, six times, but you don't see that. You don't need to see that. I wanna show you something mundane. So we'll start with the wrong way. This is the wrong way to cut together B-roll. The shots are just horrible, you know, there's that amateurish pan, you know, there's wobbly, shaky footage, there's just still footage that's directed at the thing that you want to shoot, it's just horrendous. So I don't mind when it's run and gun when I'm filming, I don't mind if it's run and gun whilst I'm filming a vlog, but I didn't want that. I wanted to capture it in a cinematic-esque style. So let's have a look at how you could take the same shots, just from different angles, with a little bit of uh, technique applied. Just before I go into this, remember I said I broke the golden rule, the lighting is terrible, so I'm literally pushing the camera to its limits and uh, yeah I were on my own so it's very difficult to shoot on your own when making a cup of tea I discovered this halfway through the process but here it is anyway Now you've seen how I would shoot it, it's very short, but you can see there's a lot of different things going on there that you can see the B-rolls cut together in a nice way. So the first shot this time, what I did is I crept out from behind the door. Now this gives it a feeling of depth. And I got this idea from when I've used sliders in the past, that what you try to do is always slide from behind something so the foreground looks more interesting. You get to see the entire room nice and slowly. It gives everybody a few seconds to become accustomed to where we are. But not only that, you'll notice it almost swings at a 45 degree angle. That's because I've added letterboxes to make it look movie-esque, but I've keyframed the letterboxes. Now, if you don't know what keyframing letterbox is, run a quick search on YouTube, you'll find a gazillion tutorials on it. But essentially what it means is that if you had a still camera and you add the letterboxes, you can make it look like the camera's moving up or down. And because I were moving left to right, when I put an upward stroke on it, it looks like it's moving at a 45 degree angle. Now, this second shot is just a filler shot. It basically is me just sliding the camera across a glass table. Now this is replicating a slider, and I do this all the time. No matter where I am, if I'm out and there's a car, or my car, I'll just put something soft like a tea towel, or a, a t-shirt, or a rag, onto the bonnet, and I'll stick the camera on top of it, and I'll slide across. 
and it gives this really beautiful sliding motion. I do have a slider, but I don't want to carry around a tripod, a catch plate, and a slider everywhere I go, and I can't take them on a plane. So if you go back to the Italy video, you'll see one that slides out from behind a post, and that's exactly how I did it. There were another wooden post running adjacent, I just stuck it on the top and pulled to the left. Now this shot here is the bottle scene. So you can see that the bottles are no longer looking dusty. That's because it's shot in the right light. It's shot from the right distance. You can't see um, the horrible tones in the bottles. I've also, I've not used any sort of jib for this. I just literally grabbed hold of the camera, held it really steady and pulled down. And all I tried to do when I would look finder is try to keep the space roughly the same at either side of the bottom of the bottle and the neck of the bottle. And then when I got into my editing software, I used a warp stabilizer. So this gives it a jib style effect. Now the transitions that I used are just the standard ones. If you've watched my Scotland video and you've watched my Italy video, there's some pretty intense transitions in there. And those transitions I made myself uh, following tutorials off of YouTube that taught me how to make them on Adobe After Effects. And the difficult thing with something like this is that's time consuming and not everybody has those programs. So what I've tried to do is I've tried to make it so that these are simple transitions and the cross dissolve on Final Cut is one of the built in ones. And so that's what I went with. And again, on this shot with a letters board, I'm sliding it from left to right and I just added keyframes. It's as simple as that. This next shot, I used the same thinking as I did when I slid out from round the door. And then I added a stabilizer on it, which you'll see it moves very, very gently from left to right. Here's the bit where it got difficult because I'm already at a low light situation. I'm filming on my own, trying to move with nothing really to film. I had to somehow get the cup so I propped the camera up on the side on a, on a box and I stuck a potato peeler underneath the lens to hold it up at the right angle and then I zoom in. Now I zoomed in and I don't want the entire shot to look like this because I want it to make it look like the camera keeps moving. So I kept the camera in the exact same place and what I did is I pulled the lens so that it went to its lowest setting which would be 24 millimeters and then I slow mode it at 60 frames a second and I made some action. I threw the cup, you never throw a cup like that, but I threw the cup so that you got this interesting moment where it sort of looks like there's more than one camera filming. Now the next scene is me putting the kettle underneath the tap and you'll notice now it's starting to follow a narrative. I've showed the room, I've given a few shots from around the room, there's a cup on the table, the kettle's now being put underneath the tap. Your brain fills in the blanks and you can imagine me picking the kettle up and putting it underneath the tap. But if you look in the bottom of the frame, if you look right at the bottom, where the kettle's shining, the, the, the light's bouncing off the kettle, it's reflecting a picture of me. You could see me holding the camera in the kettle. I'd never let this kind of shot go into my B-roll. I'd never do it. But as I was filming on my own, there were no one else to help me apart from my son, and he couldn't hold the camera for more than one second, two seconds. I didn't want to use a tripod because I just wanted to replicate the things that had been a natural situation. I left this in so that you could see it was genuinely me filming. And uh, again, this is shot 60 frames a second and slowed down. Now this is the worst shot out of all of them and I just didn't want to reshoot this. This was the most difficult because trying to hold a camera, move forwards and put a tea bag into a cup at the same time is absolutely ridiculous. Now you'll see some slight flickering around the background of the cup. Uh, that's because the shutter speed was set wrong on the camera. But I didn't want to go back and film this. It was such a difficult shot to get that I didn't bother. Uh, my son held the camera steady so it didn't fall over. We just used a chair, balanced it on the back of a chair and he just held it steady. Normally you could use a box or whatever you wanted. It doesn't really make a difference. But again, shot nice and slow. Then it cuts to a scene of me taking the tea bag out of during the cup and tapping it on the side. Again, just pretty standard shots. I've added keyframes to make it look like that there's movement in the camera when there really wasn't. This next shot, it's composed nicely. It goes back to something you've seen earlier. This is what's called a callback shot. You know the table's got the chessboard on it. You've seen the whiskey, the decanter, and the chessboard earlier on. I'm just literally sliding back on the glass on the table and that's it. 
look how great that looks. I think that's probably my, my favorite shot out of all of them in this B-roll. And if I were cutting together some actual B-roll with some actual content, this would be one shot that'd actually make it into the edit. The rest of them, I'd probably, if I'm really honest, shoot them again, shoot them again, shoot them again. I'd rig lights up and yeah, this is this is the only shot that'd really make it in. And I love this, this is a nice little slow-mo shot. The box would just rested on the side, the camera placed on top of the box. And then, yeah, that's it. But you can see there's a flickering light in the background. Again, that's because the shutter speed was too high, but I found that with a higher shutter speed, you get better slow motion. And if you don't know what shutter speed is, again, go to YouTube and check that out. So that's a, a breakdown essentially of the shots. There's nothing really to all the shots that I shot. It's just using keyframes, it's keeping the camera steady, it's looking at the best perspective to shoot what it is that you wanna capture. Look at things from a different angle. The beauty of using a camera is that you can essentially, you can capture things from perspectives that your eyes wouldn't always see. So let me get into the gear that I use to shoot the B-roll. So I use a Canon 16, nothing fancy, it doesn't need to be. My backup camera is a Canon 7D. Now each one of those has a 24 to 105 mm lens on it. I have two of them. I have a 50 mm prime lens. I have a GoPro Hero 4 Black, a Fair UG4 gimbal with a remote. It's a wireless remote. I have a Phantom 2 drone with a gimbal on the bottom of it. And I also use the Holy Grail of lenses, which I just bought after I got back from Italy because Chris Ramsey, if you're watching this, you teased me too much. Just to let you know what I mean by that, Chris Ramsey had this lens. It was amazing, I had to get this lens. So I got back home, spent a couple of thousand pound buying it. It's amazing. And that's a 70 to 200 mil lens, the Usum 2 L series lens with an F-stop of 2.8. Now, that doesn't matter if that doesn't make any sense to you. The reason that I still use the Phantom 2 drone is because I can completely control the GoPro. I know the GoPro inside now, I've used it for a long time now. Uh, I use it all the time for all different types of stuff and therefore when I put it on the bottom of the camera, I'm comfortable with the shots that are coming out of it. So when I were filming the tree scene in the start of the Scotland vlog, you'll notice that the trees are bouncing. It wasn't bouncing, they wasn't moving, but that's boring to look at. So I had somebody hold on to them and just move them very slightly whilst I filmed it. So you get that beautiful up and down feel. And I tried to think about how to over exaggerate what it is I'm doing. Notice when I lifted the kettle up, I didn't just pour it like you normally would. I poured it and lifted it up and then dropped it back down. It accentuates the movement. So I'm always trying to find movement in the shots. Like I said earlier on, if you're not moving or you're not filming something that's moving, you might as well be taking a photograph. So always over accentuate the moving, like when somebody fastens a bag up, you know, you just do this, that's it. But look at the movement of it again. The, you know, it's like this and it's like this. And, and in the shot where we're up in the mountains, Bo pointed something out and I said, do that again, but point a lot further. And he looks and he looks up and he points right up and it gives this beautiful feel that just over accentuates the movement massively. And movement's one of the most important things in footage, lighting, sound, movement. The rest of it is just about trying to find interesting angles. You know, coming up from something, coming down, keep the camera moving side to side. The only time you'll ever see still shots in my B-roll is when somebody else is filming and they've never used a camera. They've literally never used a camera. I have them hold the camera, I say it up for them and I move. As long as there's something moving in the shot, it doesn't so much matter if the camera's moving. Take a look at different channels on YouTube, take a look at cinematography technique, start from the beginning and just start by learning how to use your equipment. Whether you're gonna be using slow-mo, it'll be 60 frames a second, ramp up the shutter speed so that it's sharper, a lot sharper. You know, use a counter to slide along. You don't need to have a, a gimbal with you. You don't need to have a steady cam. If you're worrying about the steadiness of something, use a warp stabilizer in your software. You know, take a look at your shots, color correct them. Make sure the color's as nice as you can make it. That's the secret to good cinematography. There's not really massive amounts to it. Is, you know, just learn your equipment, learn the settings, learn to shoot in good light, choose good music. And the most important thing, and it was Lloyd Barnes who taught me this, and I just couldn't get it into my head, is you could shoot something that's amazing for five seconds, and for the entire five seconds, you're mesmerized behind a lens. You're going, wow, this is a good piece of footage. And you look at it and you're like, this is going in, this is going in. And then you realize that the beat changes in the song very quickly, and you can only put two seconds in. And you have to essentially kill your baby. You have to find 
two seconds from that footage to cut out. So find the best two seconds and don't be scared to discard that clip entirely. That's the hardest thing, you shoot something that's so amazing, you're still going, yes, it's in the can, you're looking at it, you're going, that's what I wanted, that's the best piece of footage I've ever shot. You get it back, you put it into the edit room, and it doesn't fit with the rest of the footage. It's gutting, but you have to cut it out. You have to get rid of it. And try to tell a story with what it is that you're doing. Try to create a narrative with the footage. Introduce the shot, this is this, this is where I got the cup from. Look, boom, 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 and that's it. It's as simple as that. You can't really fail. Easy. And that's the end. So thank you for watching this vlog. I'll be answering some more questions tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed it.